This podcast is brought to you by Mapper Forward's new Patreon community, the Global Coffee Think Tank. Check the show notes or head to patreon.com forward slash Mapper Forward to find out how you can become a member today. Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward, friends. I'm your host, Lee Safar. And folks, we have a real treat today. We are starting the first of a five part series with coffee scientist Shahan Yeretsian. Shahan, welcome to the podcast for the first time. Hello, thank you for having me on the podcast. This is going to be a real treat because a lot of us have followed your work through the papers and through the voice of other people. And uh, we've seen your Rico talks, we've, we've heard of all the great technology that you're working on in coffee, but I don't think I've ever seen you have an open conversation on a podcast like this before. So I feel really honored that we're getting the opportunity to talk about a few things uh, here on the podcast. The theme that we're going to be following through this series is the science of coffee. And when I say coffee, we're not just talking about coffee in the cup. We're talking about coffee as an industry as well. And you're very involved in the science of coffee in the cup and as an industry. So we're going to have a really great time exploring some really interesting questions throughout this series. Before we get started with the first question, uh, could you explain to our audience who Shahan is and what you do? Yes, yeah, sure. So uh, welcome everybody. And uh, yeah, I'm Shahan Yuretsian. I'm, uh, I'm uh, born in Syria, Aleppo, uh, as an Armenian. And with seven, I moved to Switzerland, studied chemistry, physical chemistry, went to the US, Germany for postdocs, as we called, and then uh, took a job at Nestle. And that's really the first time I really had a, a deeper contact with coffee. Before that, all I had was the coffee at the campus in California, which I enjoyed. Mm -hmm. But at Nestle, I entered a group, uh, a division, which was dedicated to do research on coffee. And uh, that's where I started to realize that coffee is not just a drink, but there's science behind. There is mm -hmm. more than just, just a beverage that we have every morning. And it was really, for me, a surprise to see how much research is actually done within this leading coffee company at Nestle. And that's where I started to enter the whole subject from uh, initially from a very chemical perspective, focusing on the aroma. So my initial research was mainly on understanding the aroma and the taste and the smell of coffee. And uh, so the first product that I actually worked on was uh, the ready to drink beverage category, where we were developing uh, also the interaction of milk with coffee. It's, uh, these are two antagonists, actually, you know, one is very acidic, the other one. So that's how I started to work on a, on a very, you would call that not at all specialty category format. That's how I started to work on ready to drink beverages. And, uh, uh, and I also was in the US to do this research. And then the second major category was instant coffee. Mm -hmm. Still not, still not a uh, specialty in at least at the time. And I really learned the technology of, of instant coffee at the factory, at the pilot plant. And I must say still until today, this has been a very big learning curve for me because the major difference between a regular coffee that people roast and the, and the instant coffee or a soluble coffee is that you have not only to roast, but you have to extract, to dry, to recover aroma and give to the customer a product where you have done so much more because when you extract, as an industry, you have to understand how to do it, how to optimize it, uh, how to recover aroma, how to concentrate. How to... So there's so much more science that, in fact, people who work on instant coffee are, are incredibly good scientists mm -hmm. because they do so much more. Of course, the product at the end uh, might not be as good as a freshly roasted and uh, extracted on a porta filter, but it's for to learn about coffee has been a very big experience. And then later I moved to uh, to the capsule system, Nespresso, and worked for a few years on Nespresso uh, before I took this job here at the Zurich University of Applied Sciences. And I came here really with the clear intention, and that was also what I shared with the people in the interviews. I'd like to create a coffee excellence center here where I will do research as well as education. But my job officially and my, my main job here is also to teach and I'm teaching analytical chemistry. So I'm in the chemistry department 
teaching analytical chemistry, the science of measurements and data analysis. But the research is really mainly around the science of coffee. And so uh, I, I came here 2008. And uh, since then, we have been building and growing in this, in this endeavor. My one of my final exams during my uh, degree in food tech. Uh, my my degree was in genetics, but I took a food tech class. And one of my final assessments was, you have to produce a cup of instant coffee that's drinkable. And okay. so I yeah. really can relate to how hard it is to make good quality instant coffee. <laughs> yes, yes. So and now it's moving. Good. And now yeah. it's moving like deep into specialty, a lot of people are talking about how yes. they want to be creating specialty instant coffee, especially given how the economic trajectory of the next few years is looking. So yes. exactly. the first question we want to explore in this series is how is research elevating specialty coffee in the cup? Yes. Very important question because I'm a scientist on what, my really background, my background is science. Mm -hmm. But um, when I moved to the university here, basically in the first few weeks, the first move I did is to become member of the SCA, SCAE at the time, Swiss Association mm -hmm. of Europe. And I immediately joined the board of the Swiss uh, chapter. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, because I realized that, of course, there's so much science being done. But at the end, coffee is something that people enjoy and consume. And it is something that is way beyond science. Science is important, but really why coffee is such a popular and important drink in our daily life, it's because it has an emotional side. It has a mm. pleasure side. So, and the specialty coffee originally and fundamentally has been a craft and has been an artisan profession. The people who started also, Alfred Pete, who started in Berkeley, you know, who is kind of, I would say, the, the person who initiated the whole movement, he, his major motivation was to give higher quality to the people. Because he felt that when he moved from uh, Europe to Berkeley, that there's just, you can do better. You can just do better. And so he wanted to deliver a better quality, a better experience to people. But they didn't start from a scientific but much more from a craft artisan perspective people who tried a lot you know try and error and they did it on a small scale and a lot of the work initially was driven by passion by a desire to create the perfect cup of coffee but it was not based on research these people really were were artisan people mm. and and initially they really could do a huge improvement because it wasn't that difficult initially. There was so much that you could do easily, you know, improve and uh, and uh, and deliver. So during, I would say during the first 10 years, and when I started, most people who are in the coffee era were not people who did study, uh, who studied anything, you know. Uh, that's totally different today. Most people who are in the coffee business have a bachelor, a master, or even a PhD. Mm -hmm. So when I started 15 years ago, these are all artisan people and seeing uh, coffee as a craft. And they did a huge effort, but out of passion. But at some point, you reach a point, you reach, you reach a, a level where you cannot improve anymore by this approach. Mm -hmm. And they were hitting a wall. They were hitting a wall and they were excelling then in passion kind of a little bit, in my opinion, a little bit too much, you know? So the passion and all the, all the, the uh, colorful speaking became a little bit empty to me because <laughs> at some point you really have to go beyond that, you know? So if you want to improve the roasting process, you have to study roasting. You cannot just do, do thousand roast profile and taste and not control all the parameters. And so it became like a, like they reach a level where there wasn't, couldn't, they couldn't learn in this process. There was no improvement possible anymore. And, uh, and that's where suddenly people with education start to come in and bring more a systematic approach to improving the experience. It's, mm -hmm. still, it's still the experience that counts. It's still the quality in the cup that counts. 
But the approach, how you improve that, has to be, be more systematic. Uh, the way you gather data, the way you analyze the data, that you, what you're doing, has to become more systematic. You have to control all compounding factors. You have to control your experiment. You have to get statistics. And that's where, uh, at some point, the specialty coffee movement started to, to become much more interested in, in science. So for example, when I joined the board of the ACAE in 2015, it was Paul Stack at the time who created a position on the board to drive science. It didn't exist before that, you know? Mm -hmm. There was education, but also the education was based on, on non-scientific uh, content. You know, a lot of the things that were initially taught and still today are just beliefs sometimes, you know? And uh, the more and more also education is becoming knowledge-based, science-based. And I think basically the level of education increased and people realized that a systematic approach to improving the experience is what needs to come. And, uh, and that has accelerated, in my opinion. And we have seen now different universities uh, really building up uh, divisions or groups who work on that increasingly better. Uh, but of course, the science of coffee, in a way, is a very easy field for a really educated scientist because you don't have that much competition. You know, if you go into right. catalysis or other fields, you have so many, every universe has a big group since 20 years. So coffee, uh, you have a field you can discover and you have so much, I would call that like low-hanging fruits mm -hmm. to harvest at the moment. So it is a it is a fantastic field. And that's how now the specialty coffee has embraced science because specialty coffee wants to, um, to improve the experience, but the way to achieve that is changing and is becoming more scientific. So it sounds like what you're saying is over the past 15 years, the industry has been more open to the idea of science and has come to, as it, I wouldn't say our industry has reached maturity yet. It is slowly edging that way. Yeah. <laughs> but what it sounds like is that people have looked at like a lot of the roasting books out that are out there and the brewing books that are out there and they've realized a lot of this is opinion. Uh, yes. It's not yes. science per se. Yes. It's actually more than opinion. It is misleading. It is Tell me more. not helping. It's not helping the people because they believe in that. You know, they have a language about talking about roasting that just doesn't make sense, for example. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't help. It is misleading. Also, the way they talk about water for extraction sometimes, it's just not helping. So it is, in fact, not productive. It is, it is actually keeping, holding people back a lot of the things that are taught. Okay. You, because you raised the water thing, I have a question that was given to me for you by somebody. So Sara mm -hmm. Lale, who is the host of our Middle East podcast said, if water comes up in your conversation yeah. with Shahan, can you just ask him one question for me? And I said, of course, if he brings sure. it up. So you have, uh, Sara is in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. And there are some interesting things that happen with the way that water is supplied to cafes over there. And, okay. uh, her question is, if you had to focus on one thing, just yes. the most important thing about coffee, about water, what would mm -hmm. it be? Would it be the pH? Would it be the, uh, the TDS? What would it be? Yeah, neither, neither of these two. Neither, ah. not the pH, not the TDS. It is when, let me a little bit describe how sure. I approach coffee. Coffee, when you want to understand coffee, you have first to know how to measure the quality of coffee. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, water. I'm talking about water. <laughs> so what you actually want to measure. There's so much confusion about in what unit, in what, what to measure in coffee to have an opinion on the water. So we have, in, we have published books, you know, uh, handbooks, where we have defined two major parameters to, the, to measure. One is the hardness, but not in concentration, uh, in absolute quantity, in PPM, 
part per million. And I don't want to go into the units, but it's very important in what unit you measure the total hardness. Mm -hmm. And that's done wrong often. And the other one is the alkalinity. So, and you have to measure these in PPM, in uh, part per million, part per million equivalents, basically in quantity, mm -hmm. not in concentration. And uh, I don't want to explain that here, but so first you have, uh, there are so many things you can measure and you can measure a lot, but what we have said that if you measure the total hardness in quantity and the alkalinity in quantity, then you can describe your water in a very good way. Uh, and so first is measure. First, you have to learn how to measure the water. That's the first thing. And for that, uh, people should delve into it and they should do that not here on the podcast, but uh, uh, by themselves. And we can teach them if they come to meetings. The second is the aim. So measure. The second is aim. What should your water be in order to have a good extraction? So measure and aim. And there, the discussion is a little bit in the measure. It's clear. There's no ambiguity. The second is the aim. What water would you like to have for the best possible coffee extraction, and there we have to differentiate between, ex between water to protect your machine and mm -hmm. water for the pure sensory quality. If you do espresso, the protection side is important. You cannot mm -hmm. uh, ignore that. And the second is, of course, the sensory experience. And there we have defined what we call a core zone, a zone in, of P uh, or in PPM hardness and alkalinity. It's a two-dimensional mm -hmm. square. Your water is a point on that. And so there's a core zone where we recommend people to be um, in order to have a good extraction. It's rather low hardness, low alkalinity. Uh, and I also, also agree and accept that there's a little bit subjective aspect because when we talk about experience, when we talk about protection, we are clear, you know, what water should be to protect it. In terms of pro uh, sensory, it really also depends whether you have a very high quality coffee or a low quality. It's not the same. If you have really high quality, you don't want to, to change the flavor profile. So you want actually come with very low alkalinity and uh, hardness. Um, but we have defined a core zone that we think is a very good zone to work for espresso. For filter coffee, it's a little bit different. And we are working on that. In filter coffee, you don't have the protection aspect. Mm -hmm. You can focus exclusively on the center because uh, scaling is, is not important. You can actually clean your, your tools. So uh, then, uh, and filter coffee is also, um, the water has a much bigger impact. In espresso, as a very general rule, I would say water is of minor importance mm -hmm. from, for the sensory. For the protection, it has a big importance for the machines. In terms of sensory, if you are using water that is like general water that you get all over the places, the sensory impact is small. And um, um, and it's not going to impact the ex experience for most of the people if you have a little bit different waters. If you go to filter coffee, that's where you start to see the impact of water. And that's also we have much more freedom to play with the water because yeah. you can focus on pure sensory. And there we are actually working, but overall we can say that you can go to even lower alkalinity. If you go to lower alkalinity in a professional machine, you have the danger of corrosion, uh, which is not good. In filter coffee, we can go even to much lower total hardness and alkalinity to get a very good coffee, as long as the coffee itself is good. If it's a bad coffee, then sometimes to have more alkalinity and total hardness can actually help to enhance correct a little it. bit, uh, enhance it, but otherwise for a good quality. So, so that's the second. So the first is measure, aim. And then the third is if you have a coffee that has this kind of uh, alkalinity and you want to get here, so this is the measure and the aim, how do you treat it to get there? So the third thing that uh, people who work on water have to um, um, know is once you know, once you measured your water and once you know where you want to go, how do you treat the water to go from where you are to where you want to be. So measure, aim, and treat. That's the fundamental approach. Each one requires some knowledge, but that's the approach that people should take. And uh, every point is a little bit complex. Water is not an easy subject. 
But once you know how to approach it, then you can learn and that's it. With that final step, is is the suggestion there through remineralization of the water or uh, okay. perhaps removing the the um, exactly the remo- okay great so it's so about- there are different type of treatment sometimes in general the water is more has more alkalinity and and um, right. and total hard so it is mainly removing right and it depends whether you have to remove what sometimes people now go into the approach. Removing everything and then remineralization. Remineralization with magnesium but then, and with things like that. Exactly. So these are now um, the treatment. There are a variety of methods for treatment. Uh, but once you know where you are and where you aim at, then you have to know your tools for treatment. And then it's a question of budget, equipment. But you have to go from here to here, you know, mm-hmm. from the from where you are to where you aim to be. And that's... And then there are different methods to treat. When I was in the industry 20, when I started in the industry 20 years ago, water wasn't even a conversation. Yes. Now, I I agree. In every um, consulting job that I do with cafes, one of the first questions I ask is how you're approaching your water. How, How are you assessing the water? It's a fundamental part of the way that we approach which again is just so important in the conversation of why science and coffee need to have a better relationship. Yes. And in fact, the the water was important to look into it because there was a lot of wrong um, knowledge in the field. And so clarifying the units, how to measure coffee, I think is the most impactful thing, but it is actually not easy. People think about units, you know, or the concept of concentration, is sometimes difficult for people who have not had any formal education in science. Yeah, it's the first thing we learn in first year chemistry, right? Yeah, <laughs> and pH is not so important, and um, and of course the uh, yeah, I think these are the, the, the many other things can be measured, but right. you have to focus on the most relevant things. Do you have a paper out on water? Sorry, can you repeat, please? No problem. Do you have a paper that um, has been released on the research that you guys have done into water and its relationship with coffee? Yes. We have written a handbook. It's about 80 pages. Great. Which is in the SCA library. So you can actually buy it from the SCA. So um, we have there. And we have some papers also, which I can share with you. Fantastic. We'll include those in the show notes, folks, if you if you want them. Now, we're going to head into the next episode where we're going to talk about, so in this episode, we spoke about the uh, how is research elevating coffee, specialty coffee in the cup. The next episode, we're going to talk about it, how it's elevating specialty coffee as an industry. This is going to be a very interesting conversation. So we'll see yeah. you in the next episode. Peace, love and peanut butter, everybody. Have an amazing rest of your day. Thanks friends. If you enjoyed this video, here's what you should check out next. Consider supporting Mapper Forward on Patreon and be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell before you leave.